Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, who is the man that a child speaks to in the middle of the night alone in his room? Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is an 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Of course, you can uh, write in uh, at uh, realghoststoriesonline.com as well. And if you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. EPP is what we call them, extra podcast person. Uh, you sign up to do that at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash realghoststories. $5 a month gets you access to all of the bonus material, uh, all of the uh, advanced episodes, the... Uh, advanced episodes, the archive. There's so many things there. Uh, also, our ebook, audiobook, it's all there for you. Ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. I kept wanting to like throw in like and a food dehydrator as well. But well that's... I kept thinking you were going to. But wait, there's like, more. And, yeah. But wait, yeah. you get this entire pots and pans set. If you call right now, yeah. That's so it's funny. some cheap ass shit, but it's free. The mir- Did we buy anything off a of TV? Any uh, any purchases like that? Um, no, I don't think so. Can't say I've ever actually. I don't think so, because most of that stuff, like, oh well, you know what? I kind of, this would qualify. I think I have bought some of the wall, like at Walgreens, that yeah, made yeah, yeah. seen on TV yep, yep. stuff. Yeah, I bought that one year, two years ago for Christmas. Everybody in my family got something as seen on TV. <laughs> and, and it was kind of awesome because it was funny. Like my nephews in particular, they were like, whoa, yeah. I saw this on TV. And I'm like, yeah, and now it's yours. And and who doesn't go down the as seen on TV aisle and go, well, that's kind of cool, but it's probably shit. And I don't want to spend $20 on it. And, right. But, 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 but you still want to try works, it. Yeah, exactly. It the way they say it does. Yeah. So one, one of them, I got like some kind of magic egg boiler or something yeah, like that. Uh, yeah. And my nephew was like all into it. And he said it, it worked really well. Like he used it. Yeah. I would have just set it out just as like a little piece of art, you know, like, mm-hmm. look at what I've got. Sure. But no, he enjoyed it and he really liked it. There's, I mean, there is some stuff every now and then. I remember I had, um, I always saw the commercials for the Miracle Blade in like the 90s. Never bought them off of television, but then like I, I found them at one of those stores where it has all the as seen on TV stuff and it was the Miracle Blade. I'm like, I, I should just buy these now because I've watched the infomercial my entire life. Uh, so I'm just going to get this set. It was like 20 bucks. And you know what? They weren't great knives for like a chef for professional cooking, but, but for me, but they were super sharp and, and, and that, that was a really, and they did stay sharp for a long, long, long time. And I, I did like that because there's certain things where you just really need a super sharp knife and a chef's knife and, and most common kitchen knives, you know, they can be good, but sometimes you just need something that's like ridiculously sharp. And that I used it. So I, I did use those for quite some time. And I, I think they're all gone now. But somebody just randomly gave me one like that. And it's like a paring knife size. Yeah. And it's super duper sharp. And it was just so random. She's like, I made you this oven mitt. And I'm like, oh. and it's got like baseballs on it, you know. So uh-huh. she actually thought of me. I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. And I got you this paring knife. <laughs> like it wasn't my birthday or anything like that. It was just like. And here's an urn for your dog. <laughs> And, don't go there. Different person? Today. No, no jokes about okay. urns and dogs okay. today. No. Different person, right? a little close to home. Um, um, but so, like, do you write a thank you card? Thank you so much for the oven mitt and the small paring knife. Yeah. It was just kind of random. It was really sweet, and the knife works great. I just wasn't expecting it. That's funny. Mm-hmm. It was very sweet, though. 
So anyway. Yeah, anyway. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Let's get to our first story. It says, uh, hey, guys, my name is Victoria. I'm from Las Vegas. I have so many stories I want to submit to you, but they are not nearly as interesting as some of the experiences my father-in-law has had in his life. I'll start with a small experience I had involving him. My husband, father-in-law, children, and I all live together. We're a very tight family and do everything together. One day, my father-in-law was in his bedroom, and I had a question I needed to ask him. I knocked on his bedroom door and waited. He's known for being a jokester, so when I heard a knock back, I casually said, Ha! Very funny. Can I come in? He did not answer, and I became impatient. I said, Are you going to let me in or not? And then he came in from the garage door at the other side of the house. I was so freaked out, I never knocked on his door again. Instead, I texted him asking if I could speak to him. The next story I wanted to submit involves my father-in-law at about 30 years old. My husband, who was about four or five, and his ex-wife and her daughter, they all lived in a three-bedroom house in Utah. Occasionally, they would hear things from the garage, like a bunch of cans being knocked over with a loud crash. They'd stack soda cans into take recycling every few weeks so thinking the cat knocked them over they would go out of the garage expecting a big big mess to clean up only to find that nothing had been disturbed my father-in-law says that my husband would talk to someone in his room and play with someone when my father-in-law asked who he was playing with my husband responded the hand he assumed it was a typical four-year-old response things could not be ignored anymore when his stepdaughter complained that her room was always cold She started getting up at night asking to sleep with her mom because her mattress was being pushed off its box spring. She was only nine or ten at the time, and my father-in-law did not think she was strong enough to push the mattress by herself, but he thought it might be possible. So he just kept, so he just slept on the couch and let his stepdaughter sleep in his room to calm her down. After the third night of this happening, he got really fed up and went into her room to put the mattress back in place when he felt just how cold the room was. He said he could see his breath. It was so cold. The family managed a few more months in the house before moving back to Nevada, where the family was. I know what you're thinking, but no, they did not move because of the haunt. They moved because they wanted to be closer to family. I do not get it either. When the family loaded up all their things into the truck, the neighbors came to say goodbye and said they were surprised they lasted if they did in the house, as long as they did in the house. My father-in-law admits he did not really know what they meant. And the neighbor informed him that the previous tenants had a teenage daughter who was murdered by her boyfriend in the room his his stepdaughter slept in. After she was murdered, the boyfriend set her room on fire. It was a big scandal in the area, and the neighbor was again surprised that they had never heard the story. Now, I know what you're thinking. They loaded up and left that day, right? Wrong again. The wife and the two children were driving back to Nevada that night, but my father-in-law would stay a few more nights in the house due to work schedules. Thought he believed it and ghosts and knew all of the things happening in the house he was not afraid he made it two more nights he was sleeping into the middle of the night he was woken by the breath on his face he lay there wide-eyed not knowing what to do when the breath came deep and get into a growl and simply said get out he called his work and said sorry but i'm leaving today thank you for doing the show i only discovered it a week ago and i'm absolutely obsessed i listen while i cook dinner and fold laundry it does keep me up at night but it is a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Please keep up the good work. You'll probably be hearing me again from me very soon. I'm glad we can uh, be sleep deprivation for some. (laughs) That's good. It's goals, goals you got to have, you know? It's interesting to me that they could live in that house and they never heard the story behind it. It seems like someone, but I mean, not necessarily. I don't know. Like if, that happened at my neighbor's house and then new neighbors moved in. I don't know that I'd go knocking on their door and say, hey, did anybody tell you what happened here? I don't know that I would do that, but yeah. I definitely think there are people in my neighborhood who would. Mm-hmm. You know, I could, I've got some neighbors I think would have no problem doing that. Sure. But it's interesting that you wouldn't have heard that. I, I, you, you're supposed to, dis, you have to disclose if someone died in the house, I believe. But maybe they didn't own it and they just rented it. Yeah, that could be too. And then then you don't. Then there's nothing that says you have to do any of that. Right? It's just interesting to me. It is. And then, like, like at least they went, you know, he stayed behind mm-hmm. and they went on. But then that for that to be the first time he heard somebody say, get out. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's like, okay, we'll just harass your poor young daughter 
and leave you alone until you're here by yourself. But maybe it's because it's like, okay, we've got almost all of them out of here. <laughs> this will yeah. do it. Get out. Yeah. It's just they're on their last straw. I don't know. I mean, it's it's just a creepy, creepy story and experience that, yeah, I'd be out too. I, I didn't well, be and then no. the other one that she had with the knock, knock, and then <laughs> knock, knock back. What was that? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. I, uh, I'm just glad I've never experienced anything like that, quite honestly. That would, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to a call. Hi. Hi, Tony and Ghost Stories crew. This is Ali from Utah. I'm calling in again. Um, you read my story in EPP episode 349 about the time I slept over with a friend and encountered a dark entity. Thank you so much for reading my story. Um, I, after hearing it, I remembered that I had another incident with those same two friends. So I wanted to call it in and tell you about that one that happened before um, the dark entity. So my friend, Lee and my other friend Cece lived in this neighborhood. Um, Lee lived at like the end of the street. That the F lived at one end of the street that dead ended, and then the other end of it turned into a T intersection. So her street was one part was like the tail part of the T, and then another street that went around the rest of the neighborhood was the cross on top of that T. There was this house right in the middle of the intersection that um, it kind of became the spook house of um, the neighborhood. There was stories about um, the people who lived there were murdered or um, of course, us being 13, we believed all of the gossip. And one day, um, me and Cece were over at Lee's house playing and just hanging out, messing around like teenage girls do. And Lee said that this house at the end of the street was haunted and she wanted to go see if we could look inside and see any ghosts. Um, as we were walking up the street to this house, um, she began to tell me that it's been abandoned, that um, the supposed story was that the husband killed his kids and his wife and then hung himself in the backyard. Once we got to the house, looking back now as an adult, it looked like it was just foreclosed on. Like the people just upped and moved out, had a big walk on the front door. It's like a real estate state agency. And so me and Cece were on the porch, kind of looking in windows, seeing if we could see anything. The house was completely emptied out. There was no furniture, nothing hanging on the walls from what we could see. There was just nothing in the front, front foyer that we could look into. And um, Lee and another girl, um, May, it's like, we're gonna go around the backyard to the tree that the guy supposedly hung himself on. So we're like, okay, you guys go there. We're gonna look inside the house a little bit more. So we're, me and Cece are sitting there on the porch and they have this big front door on either side of the door. They had kind of like the stained glass, small window panes where it wasn't exactly, you could still see through the glass, but it was separated like it was stained glass. So we couldn't get a full picture, but we're looking inside and commenting on what we're seeing. And it's completely dead silent. We can kind of hear 
Lee and May just kind of mumbled talking around the house where they were looking at the big tree. And me and Cece kind of just go silent as we're looking in the windows. And out of the blue, I hear very two distinct piano notes. Like somebody had just taken their fingers and plunked two piano keys that were next to each other. Now, this, I, at this point in time, I had been playing piano for probably about three years. So it was a very distinct sound that I could easily recognize. Where Cece jumped back because she heard it too, but she couldn't tell when, what the sound was. She's like, it sounded like music or like something fell or something like that. Like she couldn't exactly tell what the sound was, but I heard very two distinct piano notes. So we jumped back and screamed, and May and Lee came running around from the back of the house asking what happened, and we were telling them, and they're like, oh, there must have been a piano in the house. There, there must still be a piano in there, and something fell on it. But the thing was, was this house was completely emptied. We went to all other sides of the house that we could get to and looked in the windows, and there was nothing left in this house. And... In all honesty, up to that point, even as a little kid, I was thinking, you know, nothing had happened in this house. You guys are just making up the story. It's just a rumor. Like, all of those things go. But as soon as I heard those piano keys, my stomach just sunk. And I tried looking into the history of the house. All I could find was just several different lines of people buying the house, living there for a couple months, and then moving out. And I never have had the opportunity to go into that house. But I don't know if I could look into police reports or anything. I probably couldn't. But... um There was, like, no news articles or anything about supposedly this murder-suicide that happened. But I definitely think something happened there. I don't know what. I don't know when. I don't know why. It possibly could have been not even something in the house. But still to this day, I can't explain the sound of those piano keys. and that's the end of this story. I'll probably be calling in and writing in um, with many more. I recently started to participate in ghost hunts and ghost tours around where I live, so I'll definitely calling in with my experiences that I've had from those. Keep doing what you guys are doing. I love the podcast. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you for sharing uh, that that experience with us. What are your thoughts? That was creepy because it was like up to the point she heard the the piano notes. Mm-hmm. Um, it sounded like like the t- young girls they were. Yeah, you know, like because as she's telling the story, I'm like, God, it sounds like something I would have done. Like, and here is the tree he hung himself on. Mm-hmm. Like, I could so so see me doing something like that when I was a kid. But then that's such a distinct sound mm-hmm. that you know what you heard. And especially when you're you're just peeking in a window or whatever you're doing, you're not expecting to hear that. No. You know. And she plays piano. She knows exactly what she heard. Yeah. That's creepy. I think anytime you get the um you know, the ghostly piano thing going on, that always is a good I know. And now I'm sitting, I'm listening to that story and I'm like, if somebody starts playing my piano in the middle of the night, I'm going to shit. Yeah. There you go. Like, not okay. Nobody gets to play my piano in the middle of the night. That would be creepy. I live by myself. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Let's uh, go over to another caller. 
here uh, on the program. Hi, let's hear your ghost story. Um, good evening, everyone who is hearing this. Um, I've called before, um, actually several times, and then on air um, in regards to my daughter, Lily, who has abilities that most children her age do not have. And one of the last phone calls I had made, um, I think it was the gentleman and Tony that was involved. It was, I don't think it was Carol or, um, anyway, um, I think I was talking about how, um, Lily had started to get sick and, um, she was having some stomach issues and there were some things. And one of the, the big things that was brought up was that, Hey, you know, we need to address those not outside of any entities or anything she may be being spiritually or spirits as she calls them. Um, and we have done that. We have consulted with her normal physician. We have gone to pediatric, gastric um, specialists, whatever they're called. I'm sorry. I know that's not the right term, but basically all of those twice now um, we're even getting a second opinion just because everything's coming back okay the blood work now is coming back okay um it i think she just gets drained at certain times and it, i'm beginning to wonder if it's around time that she'll she'll tell me a lot that happens and some things she'll tell me she just can't um and lately there's been more action in her bedroom at night so I'm wondering if that's contributing to it and like I said it's just some stress that is making her feel the way she feels or if there's you know again we're taking her to doctor multiple doctors specialists and even getting second opinions um, but I don't want to bring that up directly with the doctor, you know, hey, um, also she's seeing a spirit and now it's introducing her and she's seeing other spirits and knowing things that she shouldn't know and has for a while because I don't want them to automatically dismiss her and I think that's one of the reasons people love this podcast is because you're not judged regardless of your age or your abilities or beliefs. Um, so I thank you for that, and I come back to you for that. Um, and I guess I just need, I don't know, there's just been more things she's kind of um, brought to my attention that's going to happen soon. So I'm just going to see if those play out. And just some of the things, the spirits that have been in her room have been people she should know that, died many years ago that I really don't know much about um, on my father's side who have all passed now all his siblings have and some quite young recently but um, one is now coming to her as the young version of her and the older version of her and I know that sounds odd but she knew their nickname as a child which I didn't even know that I had to ask I was like, who is this? And then then I knew her name as an older woman. And when I say older, she didn't live very long. She lived, I think, maybe not even into her 30s. And that was due to kidney failure. year. And back then, they didn't have dialysis. But she had picked up that it had a connection with my brother who had kidney um, issues in the end and had to be on dialysis. So I'm, it's, there's just a lot going on. And, but to, to answer the last question that was kind of, or last thing that was questioned and brought up was, are we seeking health professionals? And we are doing that as well. Um, not psychiatric health, but physical, physical health for her body. So anything you guys want to interject or could help me with, again, I'm open to it. I appreciate it so much continue doing what you're doing and I wish you all the best. God bless you. 66 WNBC. Right after the hour, what are your thoughts on that woman's problems? 
You are so <laughs> random. Like, it's this like, woman just spills her heart out. <laughs> Actually, I was, um, she did call in and I was on the show that day. Yeah, I remember it. Because I, I very distinctly remember us talking about that because, you know, it could be something medical. And we were yep. like, please yep. have her seen. And so I'm really glad she yes. called back in because yeah. I have thought about her. Yeah. And I do know um, with the medical field, like you can have problems for a long, long time and they never do diagnose you. Sure. <laughs> Speaking from experience. But, um, you know, so I don't know. And I'm, I don't remember it right now if she said how old she was or if she did last time, because it doesn't mm-hmm. seem like she was that old. Yeah. Like in the six or seven range. Do you remember? I, I don't remember exactly, but that's how, I, that's how I'm picturing it. Because sometimes, you know, with kids, because we've talked about this a lot and it's happened in my own family, actually, and where there was definitely because I, I don't want to go in too deep to this because my nephew does not like to talk about it. Mm-hmm. But he definitely had experiences um, seeing my dad. Mm-hmm. And and he was telling us stuff that he, the only way he could have known was to be communicating with my dad. Yeah. And um, so I know that stuff can happen. And, you know, but it, it bothers me that everybody's bombarding this poor girl. It's yeah. like back off. I mean, in, in re- you know? yeah. I mean, it, it, other than her getting messages and having its information that she shouldn't really have, uh, are there other things here that that she is concerned with? Is, is there other? Well, help? and I think it's. I think that, uh, and she kind of touched on it in this one, but having all this experience was giving her a lot of secondary issues like okay. she was having a lot of anxiety and okay, things there we and go. stomach yep, problems. Yep, yep. You know, because like if you have a lot of anxiety, it can sure. cause you cause you to have stomach problems. And a lot and of people who are she sensitive, was having health problems. A lot of people who are sensitive have a lot of anxiety that comes along mm-hmm. with it. So I mean I, I think it's one of those things where, you know, she's probably got a very sensitive daughter. Um and it just it is what it is. And unfortunately there's probably not necessarily, you know, the medical profession that's going to tell you, oh, just do this and, you know, she'll the anxiety will be gone because that's not how anxiety works. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, hopefully they can figure out something or some coping mechanisms for her to employ in, in her life that will help with that. But it, if, if she's got that ability, I don't know that you can always just turn it off, you know. And I think those abilities are a blessing and a curse. And and I think a lot of times when they're really young, they pick up on it. And then most children, that goes away as they get older. And I would like to hope that goes away because, I mean, maybe there's some cool things that could happen if you had that. But if you can't be a normal kid, that's not right, you know. And so, I don't know, maybe... I don't know what that answer to it. Maybe somebody's listening that would have some suggestions and they could put it on the, in the group page or something. But, you know, cause it just seems to me that that's just a lot for any kid to deal with, especially if she knows things that she shouldn't know. Um, I don't know. It just seems like, I don't know if you can kind of work with her to sort of shut that down or if it just bombards her, probably kind of bombards her. It would be very, just, very confusing. Yeah. And it's not fair. It's not fair. She's a kid. Yeah. You know? She'll uh, she'll hopefully look back on and go with a, you know, not saying fond memories, but looking at back on it going, I remember when I was learning how to deal with this. And I think yeah. a lot of people that have that Ooh. have those moments where like, I didn't get it at first, but once I kind of understood it better and I made more peace with it, uh, it, it started affecting me less in terms of the anxiety and things of that that come along with it. Or maybe I remember when that happened to me and it doesn't happen anymore because that's pretty common for kids to go through that and then grow out of it. Yeah. So maybe, maybe that'll be the case, but I still would, if there's physical issues, I would do what they're doing and get the second opinions and stuff. Of course. I mean, that, Absolutely. that, that should always be the number one thing that you're looking into. But and I'm glad to hear that they do. I mean, that uh, from that first letter, we weren't sure. But thank you for calling and clarifying that and letting us know that uh, yeah. that you're doing all the right stuff just to, to cover 
it, all of your bases. And real, real quick, like, because you're a parent, would I? I just I think it would be important to acknowledge it with yeah. your child. You know, you're not crazy, but you know, because it she's getting some dark stuff that's like I really don't want to tell you about this. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's like, is there, you know, like her environment you can change or something i don't know what that is i don't know what it is that to help kind of slow that down or shut that off a little bit i don't know if you can and if you can't the best thing you can do i think as a parent is to create an environment where it's it's a safe enough place for them to be able to talk about it rather than have it all you know being kept in um if you can create the very least i mean if you can't turn it off for your kid your kid can't turn it off all you can do is is create a place where it's safe for them to be able to share what's going on and not feel like they're going to be judged or dismissed. No matter how bizarre it, it, it is, it is. you need to be in tune with that uh, and have a, an idea of what they're going through because it can be terrifying, especially at the beginning for someone, you know? I'm a WNBC. There you gotta be uh, really, uh, really in tune with that shit. <laughs> I can do a lot of weird shit. I wear a big cowboy hat. I'm a zombie now, but I'm back <laughs> on the air. Hi, this in the morning. 66 <laughs> WNBC. I know this pain. Fucking bitches. One of these, like the uh, daughter, <laughs> that Brian guy that locked himself in his room. He was a crazy mother. Oh shit, my mic's still on. <laughs> Hi, uh, Don Imus. Uh, shit. The fuck is this? The fuck is all this? 66 okay, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes your brain works in really mysterious ways. <laughs> uh, come out of that with being Don Imus. Why not? He is dead. Yeah. He died. Yeah, he's dead, right? Right? And yeah. you were channeling him. I was channeling Don Imus. <laughs> what was that, Carol? I just completely blacked out for the last four minutes. Oh, my God. What was I doing? <gasps> what? Why am I wearing this giant hat? <laughs> because <laughs> I have to wear earbuds. I can't even fit headphones over it. <laughs> All right. That's going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. Uh, hopefully you like the show enough to keep us on the air. Sign up to be an extra podcast person. Get all the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, and more. Do it at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Until next time, for Carol, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to another episode of Real Ghost Stories Online.